a long day and too much work we need to do today. And uh, uh, we start our workshops. It will be today in program. If you have a program, we have five workshops on the Sobon. And the first uh, workshop will be dedicated to the fracture, transfer fracture of the tibia, this clinical case like you see here. It is now it is attached with the plate, but we disconnected later when we put the first rings and after that I show you how we may manipulate the fragments to reduce uh, this fracture to adjust the uh, the fragments of the bone and uh, uh, to stabilize this uh, fracture of the tibia. Okay. Now we start with this workshop. Uh, for workshop, I uh, we prepare four rings. This is four. Maybe you see it like this, but later I show. This is two half ring, like uh, two half ring connected with a bolt, like you see here. This one bolt here, and now we connect it, we put another bolt. And for the fracture of the tibia, we, want the, we usually use uh, four rings. We need four rings because it will be stabilized. We need two rings on the proximal part and two rings on the distal part. We prepare this system and uh, one ring, I do like this. After that, we prepare another one, okay, another ring. It is connected with a bolt, like you see here. Okay. We put another one. Uh, it should be tied with the two wrenches, like this. Okay. Tight the bolt. Okay, the same we do with the first one. Okay. After that, what we do, we choose the length of the, we need to see the f how it is along the fragments. In this case, this is the proximal part of the tibia. It is, uh, uh, exactly in the half and uh, I should choose the, uh, the roads to connect this. I look at for this it is it will be plus minus this road like you see. This road 120 millimeters if you distance is more or the fragments is shorter we choose another road because there is different size this is 100, 120, 150 millimeters. What we do now, we connect them, these two rings with the roads, okay, like this. Usually we, we choose maybe fourth or fifth hole of the ring because this connected bolt, we position it exactly anteriorly. And after that we put this road on the fourth hole. On the this, uh, distance it for this center center bolt. We put two row, two nuts here. One, and uh, we call it it tamburo in Italian. It's like a two. Okay, the same we do it in the fourth hole. In this way, these roads don't influence it of doing x-ray or fluoroscopic control during surgery. And you see radiologically, you see really good the bone that will be reduced. Okay, we put two.
tight it usually with two always use two wrenches like this like this okay rotate now we prepare another two rows the same position as the fourth hole Last one, fourth row, fourth hole, we connect them. Okay, let's see. This is the system for the proximal part, and the same we prepare just in the beginning. On the for the distal part, and put here. If during demonstration you want to give me any question, better you do it immediately or later, how you want. In any case, I'm ready to answer. Okay, this is another one. them. Yes, usually it should be done with uh, assistant, but uh, assistant stay in front of me. Yeah, but today for demonstration we stay near of each other, but normally the patient stay here and the assistant from another side. <coughs> we do the same job to connect these two, two rings. I use again the same length of the road because like you see this mm, permits me to distribute all the rings uh, on the leg, leg of the leg. I use the same hole, fourth hole. And this way they don't overlap in with each other. The patient, after that I show you, the patient uh, for the treatment of the fracture uh, should be positioned on the table, a uh, normal table, operation table, but it should be done skeletal traction because the patient been uh, right in the emergency room, usually it will be done or external fixator, it's like a monolateral, it's uh, for the temporary fixation or usually it is skeletal traction, skeletal traction on the uh, calcaneus bone and when the patient in the operation room or just we have it skeletal traction or it should be done. It means you need to touch the foot, the skeletal traction of the Kirchner wire and the traction in the way that fracture remains just a, a little bit realigned. In this situation, we can do this, but you, I think you are orthopedics, you imagine how it will be done. 
for the treatment. Connect them. All this ring is parallel, like you see, because if you use the same length of the roads, the rings became parallel automatically. Okay. Oh. We'll leave it like this. Same position, fourth hole. One, two, three, four. Now, you see, the system is ready for reduction. What we do usually, we do, we start the surgery from the proximal part. We prepare the wire. The first wire I want to put, it will be normal Kishner wire. No olive wire, because the olive wire we use we will use for reduction of the fraction, but now we are show you this is classical Kirchner wire or wire with the with the tip particular tip. This is the first wire. We may do it. It is better to do it on the fluoroscopic control. In this way, we see the line of the. Uh, of the knee joint, we see the proximal part of the tibia because you know the tibia, it is um, like an anatomical axis in the mechanical axis are overlapping. It is exactly perpendicular, maybe only three degrees of inclination in varus, but no, uh, we, we do it exactly uh, parallel to the joint line. It is easy to to manipulate. Okay, I use here this guards, which is a paper, but usually in operation room we use uh, uh, wet guards with alcohol and chlorhexidine. I put this ro wire. Okay, like you see, parallel to the joint. Okay, and now what we do we know is to start building our system. The first things uh, that I said you before, this uh, bolt, uh, connected bolt, should be exactly anteriorly. Usually, we designed the, the patella in the way you see patella exactly in anterior, uh, anterior posterior view. We realign the patient with patella exactly uh, in vertical. In our bolt, it will be in the same position like a patella. In this way, you have a good orientation because now you see the, the, uh, the bone, is, it looks straight and nice. But if there is a fracture, the, everything is uh, displaced the, and the, you don't see so good uh, the, the bone inside of the soft tissue. Okay, this is a good or, uh, good position now for orientation and we put the slotted bolt to fix this wire. This wire, we do like this. Okay. 
one second. No, maybe not. Okay, keep this, please. Yeah. yeah, the ring, it will be just a little bit more posterior because you imagine the soft tissue, the, the, the muscles, volume, it's much more bigger posterior. It's just a little bit up. No, no, just like this. Okay. Uh, yes, assistant usually keeps the ring and I do it. Manipulate. Okay. Like this. You orient it is. Okay. Another one. Okay, what I do I I tie it on one side. And here I should do the tension. Oh, yeah, you, this wire permits me shifting inside of the bone. You like it's possible to do inside of the bone or uh, shifting on the on the bolt. Now I tighten it better again because I, I centered my ring on the tibia on the proximal shaft, and I use the tensioner for doing good tension of this wire because it's a really important thing. We do it at quite maximum, like 130 degrees here on this tensioner. But this wire, like you see before, it's quite uh, in the horizontal uh, plane. Keep it a little bit like this. We need to use another one, another wrench if you want to keep it better. Better to use two wrenches. Okay. Did it. Perfect. Now after that what we do? Now we have uh, just a little bit of fixation. Uh, the second step what we will do. It's not so comfortable. Because our system is here it's not so comfortable. Okay. <coughs> because we have this uh, instrument, it disturbed me to to the mounting the frame. I remove one rod, and I change position of this rod later. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, now, we, you see here, we may orient it, the distal ring, and it will be done the same, the same precision, but I think for simplify our job, we connect them directly now, because this two system, two tamburos, should be connected with the roads. What we do, like you see here, I should choose the length of the road enough to connect the rings here, like this, but uh, I need to remember that maybe during uh, reduction procedure I should do again the traction because frequently the bone is overlapping and there is not enough skeletal traction. For this reason I, sh I need to change it better. Don't use this short one but we will use again a little bit longer. Uh, 100 20 again, practically we use all of them the same length. Okay, we put the nuts. I, do, I don't use a long road in this situation because like you understand, if we use, we may use the long, long road to connect all of this ring, but these roads 
will be not functional because it will be not possible to manipulate the system and you can do really comfortable skeletal traction. But in this way, when I put separated road, it is easy to adjust the system separately. Okay, we put this in a different holes. Like you see, the fourth holes is uh, occupied now here. And we shifting maybe two holes below, for example, or six hole. Okay. We do it parallel. One of other. Adjust it. And we leave one one part of the road a little bit longer, like you see here. I leave one centimeter and a half plus minus. In this way, I may do destruction for the reduction of the fracture. I'll put it here. Another one. They should be in the same same length. You may measure it or if you you want to be sure. This way all our system became realigned. We put another two roads, posterior and the same hole, six, three, four, five, six. Okay. our system I put again a six hole I leave it a little bit longer from one part I hope you see it. Okay. I tight one part better. This is short part I tight it with the wrenches. This. A long part, I don't tie, tie too much because I need, like I said, you, we need to do this traction here. Traction and I don't tie it. Okay, obviously now mm. this uh, uh, system is not stable. We should orient the proximal part parallel to the bone in two plane and the distal part parallel to the distal part of the tibia. What we do now, the second second step, we put the uh, wire on the distal tibia. Okay, we use the same smooth wire, not olive wire because it's easy to, to shift in uh, the inside of the bone. And uh, we you may use fluoroscopy again for doing this uh, procedure. We see it. We don't have here the fibula and uh, but we have a pieces and uh, usually the first wire, wire we don't put on the fibula in tibia the fibula we fix it later because uh, if there is a fracture of the fibula it may be f it should be fixed but uh, more important to reduce the tibia and the fibula may be a little bit displaced it's not, not so important for us but in any case I, I want to show you here that the first wire they we put, it is uh, not on the fibula, fibula just a little bit posterior, we put like this. Okay, we pr I prefer to put it exactly on the level of the ring. We should look it for this. Put the wire. 
parallel to the ring and we yes you should see the high of the ring it should be the same proximal part in the distal you may measure it a little bit by foot, uh, by hand like this see what uh, what is the distance proximal part is a bigger it means that this distance from proximal to distal it will be different distal it should be a little bit more higher okay now we attach it with the bolt i ask assistant keep it like this okay like this Another bolt here. Yes, this uh, double double line of the holes is uncomfortable because we may choose um, different holes, and it's much more comfortable to do attachment of the wire on the roads. Okay, and I I'll Tight one part like this. Okay. What we do with this part, if uh, the, the, the tip to to be we should be careful. Usually, I cut it from one part here, and uh, we bend it. Somebody wants to broken, we'll see, but now for now we do the classical way. We bend it this way. Three steps which I use one. One time you do it 70 degrees, second 100 degrees, a third you go inside. It will be positioned on the on the bolt. In the way that this wire don't disturb other holes of the Okay, we should tension this wire really good. Now our frame is just a little bit realigned. You see the distal corresponding of the distal fragment, proximal to the proximal fragment. And theoretically, you uh, just adjusted a little bit of the, the fracture. But now it's not so stable frame, obviously. And what we do, we adjust uh, a little bit this uh, position. Again, we may shift in, we may look in better for position of the frame and only after that we put another wire proximal in distal wire again because in this situation the frame and adjustable we don't need to do it immediately so stable for us important to to do the skeletal traction now we do this wire maybe put in from this side from the medial by assistant or I do it again from the lateral and the way you see it better okay usually I do it in the, again below the ring the first wire I put above the ring and the second I do below the ring in the way it will be good tension and they will be crossing we don't need too much crossing here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay 
I close one eye and I look at the ring, at the wire and the way I may stay exactly parallel to the ring. And I put my wire that touches the ring in this way. Okay. I use bolt. Slotted bolt. Tight it again, good. Another bolt from one this side. And now I tension it. This way the two wires is there not so big angle between them, but uh, they're not guaranteed a translation, but in any case this crossing position permits us to stabilize much better the proximal part of the tibia. I t tension it. Again. Good, perfect. Okay, we cut this tip. Okay, and we put another wire distal part again. I remove watches in this way. I see my time. The second wire always in the distal ring, like you see, you understand me, these two rings in the middle, they in the beginning they are empty, there is no wire and there is no uh, any fixation in the middle. We do only proximal and distal part of the tibia, like this. I hope you see it. Okay. We put the bolt. And I tie this wire. Mm-hmm. Yes, if you want, don't want to to cut it in the doing this uh, procedure, you may block it. If you prefer it, it's possible to block. Obviously, e you you can do a t tension again on this wire if you block it. If you leave this long wire like this, you may do the tension again or change the position. But now I will show you only like example how you may treat the wire. Okay, we put another bolt here. And we do it in tension. Much tangle now. Oh, we 
is tighted good because the wire should be tighted really good if not it will be lo lose it and uh, the frame became unstable and there will be infection around the wire always should be much good tension it good tension and the good tightening of the bolt okay now we create this system for stabilizing proximal and distal part of the tibia what we do now we go to the more reality like it is an operation room what we do we uh, practically remove this plate because it was plate put in only for maintaining the bone now we go to real life and we create the fracture of the tibia okay because it was this plate if you see it i remove this screws because the plate was put in here only to show the fracture okay another screw Okay, let me remove this. Okay, and now, like you see, we have a real fracture. What we do, maybe we create some kind of uh, deformity and uh, what about i do now uh, like i said in the real life the fracture is not so easy to reduce maybe it looks so easy but uh, to demonstrate how we do reduction procedure i do it a little bit of displacement like this okay for example you see this fragment now just a little bit in virus and displace it proximal part displace it laterally no? in my direction what i should do i should reduce and stabilize this this fracture okay like you see here and now we start doing this reduction in the front of you okay because like i said you before we should reduce this with olive wire now we use olive wires to put in and in, in the middle we need to to put them in the rings that was empty and now we should put this wire at the level of this ring okay this is fracture it's uh, absolutely transverse but sometimes sometimes there is oblique fracture there is a fro some uh, third fragment in the middle and we should stay a little bit below and a little bit uh, above this fracture okay i put in this olive wire like you see from the lateral part this olive wire i need it to reduce this trans uh, translation my my uh, aim of my treatment will be this to do this kind of movement and for this movement i will use olive wire okay i put it here from the lateral side Okay. 
I, like you know probably the technique of this introduction of the wire, olive wire, you need to put it like this. After that you cut the skin, small incision of the skin and uh, you put the wire that should be touching the cortex of the bone in this way. We stabilize, we have a point of uh, touching of the cortex. Usually this wire have a good tip because the diaphysis of the tibia is really strong. You need to put it slowly, not doing too fast because it will be overheating of the bone and the necrosis and the infection. These wires and the trauma should be put in really slowly because it's a traumatic patient usually have really good quality of the bone. Young people. Okay, now we put this olive wire, you see, this permits me to do this kind of movement. We may do reduction, but before doing this reduction, we should put another wire up for opposite direction to the distal fragment, because it will be uh, like a system that uh, maintain the fragment. If we may move one fragment, relatively to other. Okay. What we do, we put this wire from here. Olive wire should be here. And the distal ring. I do it from this side. Now. You see? Okay. This. This olive wire opposite direction from the middle part to lateral on the third ring of the frame. And put like this. And like I said before, again you you cut the skin and our olive wire goes to touch the cortex, medial cortex of the tibia. Okay, remove it. Now what we do, you, like you see here, which fragment more displaced? More displaced, this fragment, well, proximal one. And the distal is more aligned. What we do with for this, in this case, we what we do, we put the fixed distal wire that we put the lastly I fix this olive what? end of the wire, okay, and uh, I fix this wire, yes we use always a tensioner for the ten tension the wire because it's really important to maintain original position of the of the wire. Now we, this way you like you see I put all the wire practically that touches the rings. Sometimes the wire may be going a little bit oblique and for attachment of this wire that if they don't touch the ring we should use uh, the washers. And for now we don't need them. Okay, what I do, I do the tension of this wire, olive wire. Okay, you see me? Perfect. Sorry, my wire, it's not 
thought you did really good this. this place that you should pay attention you see what this should be not happen because olive should touch really good the, the bone no no it's oh no it's okay it's easy but or maybe in the in the operation room you take the instrument you tension like this rotate it and you um, olive wire should touch exactly the cortex of the tibia after that I tight it. Okay. Again I do the tension. the bolt and I tighten the nut. Okay, now like you see, the distal system became much more stable. The distal fragment block with the three wires, it's stable. Now what we, we have, we have this intermedial fragment, this one is uh, unstable. What we do, we need to, to see in the two uh, projection with the fluoroscopy, we need to do control and if you find like like this, you see the f distal fragment displace it displace it uh, laterally, proximal fragment, sorry, laterally, and maybe uh, you look to the uh, lateral view. If you look to the lateral view, maybe this fragment displace it posteriorly. Okay, now we can't see it because if you fix it. But maybe I can try to show you. I just attach the bone because uh, okay, sorry, one second, like this. Okay, in the AP view. Oh, sorry, again, okay. Like this, you see it. In AP view, this fragment displays it laterally, okay? But if you look to lateral view, maybe the bone, oh, I don't know if you see it, no. No, lateral view. Okay. It displays it posteriorly maybe for you difficult to understand because like maybe I show you like this okay you see I think it's easy to understand there's a lateral view with the proximal fragment displace it posteriorly and what we do we manipulate with this wire olive wire we may do it uh, displace the wire posteriorly or anteriorly to reduce this displacement, okay? And what we do, we put it again here in the original position. Mm -hmm. We manipulate this wire. I put all oh, the bolt on the part of the olive 
Mm, maybe this. Mm. The bolt with the hole, we put this, yes. Okay, I do. Okay, now I, I put it oppositely in, in the way that uh, that there is displacement on the wire, like this. And the proximal fragment displace it laterally. You see? This is when I, where I stay, this is lateral view. And from the lateral, our uh, fragment displaces it laterally. What we may do here, we put another bolt from this part of the tip of the wire. Okay. And uh, we don't fix this part of the wire where is olive side here we don't fix it because it's uh, only positioned on the ball but it's not fixed it because we need to do reduction of the fragment and what we do we put here the tensioner for the tip of the wire okay after that what i do i need some kind of instrument, maybe like a cocker or some kind of, kind of instrument, I put here in the, war, in the wire, like this, you see? And the way I see how much this wire of displacement, and I see how much I need to translate. My assistant do this movement, like you see, we tension the olive wire, okay. And my instrument displace it, and the fracture reduce it. It's in this, uh, AP view, uh, for, for you it is displaced, but for us here from AP view it is good. Now what we do, we may fix it, part, fix another part, a little bit, not so much tighted, but you know that the wire is not moves, okay. And now what? I show you maybe like this. Okay. Or maybe remove it here. In this way we show you better. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay. Maybe easy. Okay. Perfect. And like you see, now that if you look in the EP view, no, okay, this, in EP view, it looks reduced good, okay, the fracture. But if you look to the lateral view, completely dislocated, you see, because we would do this reduction with the wire in one plane, but in another plane, this reduction is not perfect. It is displacement posteriorly. You see? This is anterior cortex, and the fragment, proximal fragment, displaces it posteriorly. What we do in this case, sorry, you go come here, please. Okay. What we should do for reduction of this problem, I do, I release again this wire, but only one side, one for uh, another, slowly, what I do. I release this, another part is fixed, the fragment don't move, and what I do with this wire, I bend it like this, Now you see the fragment's not not shifting really good. What I do to to do this shift 
uh, I do a skeletal traction, a traction between the proximal and the distal fragment. I distract from second and third ring, like this, and like this. Because with the tension of the muscles, the bone wants to be shortened. We do this distraction uh, of all four roads parallel. Okay. And this way. My fragment's now free for movement. Okay. Sorry, maybe like this. In, like you see now, this fragment posterior, what I do? I take this wire and I bend it anteriorly. I bend the wire. Uh, maybe better from this side, sorry. You see this wire? Okay, it's free. And the fragment displaces it posteriorly. What I do? I, I bend the wire like this, I put the bolt in more anterior position, like this, Now it is just a little bit reduced. I fixed it because in this way the wire don't move. Not tension again. What I do again because of uh, displacement it not finish it. There is again displacement there. I release another part of the wire. And uh, I do the same movement, I displace it in one hole, maybe like this. You see it just more redu reduce it. And now it's quite, quite realigned, okay? If I see this is realigned, what I do? I may do tension of the wire, uh, control Again, in AP view, because in control, but the AP view is good enough realigned. Just a little bit of distraction. We tie this wire. Okay, and now to be sure that it's more, more stable, I do the tension of the wire, like this. With this tension, with, if there is an arched wire like this, with the tension you may achieve more displacement or more reducing. You see this was sm small step, now I do the tension, and this step, it is disappear and I tighten it. Mm, you see? Now we have it uh, two place reduce it. We do, did a little bit traction. We did the realignment in AP view like this, and with this wire, another wire, we did the realignment in lateral view, okay? And now we don't have just, we have just a little bit of tension. And the frame became now, it's stable enough, good, good frame, okay? I position it again down, and the way I show you better maybe all the images. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay. Now we put it again the original position. Obviously, we uh, we uh, all should control it in the two plane because maybe you reduce in one plane and maybe displace it in another one. Now, like you see here, what's happened? I did uh, too much traction maybe of this wire, and uh, the, it looks like fragment displaced it a little bit down. What we may do? We may uh, do. Uh, movement maybe on by another wire if you want to reduce more or doing some kind of a, a major adjustment what we do we put another wire from this side because now the frame in the tibia it's stable enough we have three wires approximal three wires distal but we need to do more stabilization for more stabilization, we use another olive wire, olive wires. Uh, when we manipulate with the frame, when we do this destruction between the rings, in this moment you may uh, release a skeletal traction because if you have six wire, and they good uh, enough stable. If there is skeletal traction with the calcaneus, you may release in this way. You don't need to do the mm, big tension of the soft tissue. Okay. What we do now for more adjustment, b better, uh, better control the fragment. I will put another olive wire. I will put it from another side, like this maybe. or put a, a more arterial it should be better to pu put them in different plane and uh, above and be below the ring okay. Okay, we put this wire Here, uh, we may, if, if you have a, a, a road um, in the middle or occupy the hole, you may put here or uh, washer or sometimes you use a square nut. We have this some way. Uh, quadrato we have them I saw them see okay this particular uh, nut Oh, no, see, like you see this maybe, and I'll show you like this. This is not, it's high nut, like this, six uh, flat, six, six superficial and another superficial round. It's um, co comfortable to attach it to this bolt, like this. Like you see, this is comfortable to attach it and easy to tight. Okay, we, we tight just a little bit. If you need to do again the reduction, something, what you may do? Release this bolt, don't tight it again. Mm -hmm. You attach another part of the wire here. And again, with the tensioner, 
what we do because like you see here it's, it's, there is a little bit of displacement if I want I may do release another Y but I think it will be enough that we may tension at this good I release this wire again I put this kind of instrument like a cocker it should be squeeze it and you see how it moves and I I do the little bit of translation like you see in my fragment now it's realigned it perfectly if it's not uh, enough you may release the previous wire if not if only one two millimeters you may do like this now again the assistant tight my wire here mm -hmm. keep stay tighted okay no, no blick like this uh -huh. not so much but one second okay that's enough perfect and now I tension more again and I tied this wire. Okay. Perfect. Now, on my proximal fragment, much more stable. We reduce the fracture. And the fragment is stable. Hmm? It can't move because now this bone, this fragment, squeeze it between two olive wire, one medial and one lateral. If, if you try to move it like this, it's impossible, it's too much stable. And now we should stabilize again the, the distal part below the fracture. And we put another olive wire. do the same way, parallel to the ring, a little bit incline it and uh, cross it, like this, okay, cut the skin, put the wire inside, touch the bone, Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, if you find maybe in the lateral view that uh, this fragment displaces it, you may do the same manipulation with the distal olive wire. Like I show you for the proximal part, the same way we may do it in the distal part because when, uh, again we just attach it. Now we reduce it good with this manipulation here, like you see, oh, okay, and the, the fragment is good realignment, but if you find, for example, that this fragment is down like this, you know, so displace it posteriorly, you may again manipulate the same way with another wire, this wire they f put it first or another wire that we put for the second because we may bend the wire and we displace the fragment anteriorly or posteriorly. And this manipulation of the wire permits us to do the again a little bit of adjustment. Okay, now we know it's remain good, realign it, we put the bolt And if you want, we may use again this high nut. Okay, attach it here. Uh, 
at the same uh, manipulation you may do with this wire. If you have a displacement in the EP view, you may do adjustment with the olive wire in tension from another part, or the first wire you may tension. Always do manipulation in the way that you reduce the fracture in the perfect way. Okay, I put here another wire. This part I tight better again. Perfect. And we do the tension from this part. No, no, keep, 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 uh, yeah. yes, yes, keep uh, strong, because I, I bend it. Like you see, it's a much more stable frame because now the fragment can be displaced. Like you see, we can't move the bones because they, they squeeze it between two olive proximal part and the distal part completely stable. You see, I can't move them. It's so strong, it's so stable. It is uh, stable enough for the patient when he and not weight burn because the fracture like now is reduced and stable but it's not enough for for the future for this patient this patient should walk and we should guarantee stabilization or better of the leg what we should add because now we don't see if the patient have a fracture of the fibula but usually it is open fracture or displaced uh, uh, fracture we may do synthesis of the fibula too. It may be done in this moment because uh, now we we see that the tibia is okay, but we need to do stabilization of the fibula. And I put two wires on the fibula here and here. If you want, I show you maybe how we do this, but it's uh, not not so difficult. We use or smooth wire like this, or sometimes we use a big Kirchner wire. Maybe you have it in, a, in operation room, maybe two millimeters and a half or three millimeters or wire. But in th this situation now we will do it this with smooth wire only. I put it a little bit more distal because in this way this wire maintain the seed dysmosis and if you if you have maybe displacement or the stages of seed dysmosis you may use olive wire and squeeze the fibula on the tibia. After that we fix it. I don't know, we don't have time now, but for fixing this, we use a post because it's not possible to attach it directly to the ring. And what we use, we use here two holes or three hole post, male or female, how you prefer. Now we'll refine them. Yes, you see the, you see the distance, look at here like this or like this choose the hole well you put the wire like this here okay 
and another part from lateral. Okay, we use again two hole maybe. Here, oh, this is small. We should take three hole. Mm -hmm. In the same way, you attach the wire here, put the bolt, and do the tension of this wire. This is a distal wire, and the, for the proximal one, what we do, we put another wire, please. Mm -hmm. For the proximal part of the fibula, we may do uh, synthesis or with the, this crossing wire it goes from the head of the fibula like this and it goes to the tibia This virus is important to put it exactly with the heat of the fibula. You may control in the fluoroscopy because a uh, dangerous area, like you remember, the area uh, in the neck of the of the fibula here, because it's this area which exactly uh, sciatic nerves go, parallel ner nerves go here, and we should prevent this da dangerous area, and we put it. On the head of the fibula, you don't have any any alarm in this area. Okay, if you use like this way, it will be stabilized the fibula, and you may tension the wire with the bolt. But if you use this wire, usually it's too posterior for the patient. That uncomfortable wire because it goes too posterior in the proximal side, and the patient extend the knee. It is uh, disturb him on the skin. What we may do, we may do uh, this precision. If you use a little bit bigger wire, maybe two millimeters, two and a half. I touch here. And uh, this big wire, I, I do. Oof. If you look here, I re uh, leave the wire only on the fibula, on the head, but it is not uh, not presented on the skin because it is uh, inside of the bone, but the soft tissue is completely free. If this wire is uh, bigger a little bit, mm, the normal wire. It may, may be possible to use this one, 8.5 or 1.8 millimeters. But if you use bigger, it is much easier, a little bit more st more stable. This wire, okay. And you attach this wire only with the bolt on the proximal ring, and this stabilize it. Okay. Now we do the last. Is the last step. If you want, maybe we don't have too much time, but I show you only that for better stabilization of all the frame, we may put here again the half pin, or if you prefer to use wire, maybe you may use third wire proximal and the distal, or for uh, easy stabilization, we may use uh, the, the cubes. You need to yeah, we may put half pin or this or this short one. Yeah, this short one. Okay, so this one I put. Okay, and what we do? We use a small bolt or medium one here. Mm -hmm. 
and you may do it or depends of the half pin they use. It is this uh, self penetrated half pin like this. And put one here. Then we put the bolt and uh, we may put another one on the distal part. Yes, usually we put from anter anterior medial side because the bone is there is easy easy to see. Okay. And we put this. Okay, yeah, quite, we are quite finished. Okay. Practically finished, we put this small bolt to fix it, maybe I show you in the other uh, workshop how we fix this uh, half pin in any case this system now it's really stable like you see the proximal part they have a two wire two wire or third wire for the fibula three wires distal part one half pin the fragments uh, fix it with the olive wire this frame really stable and the patient may wait burn immediately after surgery you adjust it control it and and now it's practically finished for this patient.